All right, what we're going to have a quick look at now is, is the uh, tracking tools that are used in this console. Now, uh, when I say tracking tools, the, when you have a light, for example, if I just select 24 here, you can see that 24 is available from Q1 to Q18. All right, so uh, when you have a tracking console, if I take that to, we're in the middle of Q16 here at the moment, if I take that to 50%, at 50, all right, and you go, you know what, I need that to come on back in Q3. You can actually track that back to any particular point in time that you like. All right, now um, at the moment this, this thing's telling me that um, uh, fixture 24 is available Q1 to Q18. So because I'm in tracking mode, if I go update Q3, so all I've typed is update Q3. All right, it's popped it into Q3. And what I'm going to have to actually do is reassert Q16 to, uh, to make it uh, appear on, on the screen, on the, uh, on the stage. All right, so uh, go to 16, enter. All right, so there she is, all right, and it's tracked forward into this position, okay? So you can actually track back to a different point in time. So just be aware that you might have to actually reassert the, um, the queue as a part of that process to make sure that it comes up. Now, with 24 at 50 back in Q3, if I actually again set it to 24 at 50 and update Q16, you'll see it's actually turned white. Now what that white means is that, you know what, that's redundant data. It's already at 50, but you know, you know what you're doing. I've put a 50 in here anyway. It doesn't really worry me, I'm just a computer. So uh, the, the theory behind that is that you can then, uh, for example, jump to uh, say 24 at uh, 25, enter, and update that back at Q, let's say, oh, 6. All right. And so now um, that what was redundant data is no longer redundant data. So if I reload this current Q, go to Q16, you'll see that that white 50 is turned purple again, showing that it's actually come back to 50 now as a result of the fact that I'm manipulating the tracking um, uh, levels throughout the console. Redundant data, though, does appear at various different times for various different reasons. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to nip back to that other level <coughs> where I put it at 25. All right, so she went to 25 here in Q6. I'm going to get rid of that 25. So what I'm going to do is go 24 at enter. Now at enter means knockout. It means take away the value that I've recorded in this queue and just let whatever other level is there previously pass through. So update enter and how you press so it's back at 50%. But that does mean back at 16, we've got this uh, redundant data back here again. And these redundant things can appear all through your whole show file. If you've got hundreds of queues, it'd be, it'd be a little bit annoying to go through and remove the redundant data. So conveniently, there is in fact a tool that does it. And if I right click in this, this uh, section here, I can remove the redundant data from this queue or from all queues. And what that does is it basically eliminates data that we don't actually need in the list. Of course, there might be particular reasons why you might want to actually block that level to force it to be that number. And there might be reasons. So for example, Q12, in fact, there probably is a blackout, a convenient blackout somewhere. Uh, let's see. That's not a bad blackout. So let's say Q12. Q12 here. Let's say that is the blackout at the end of the first thing and Q13 is the first Q and the next one. You don't want 
values from prior to Q12 to flow through into Q13 and beyond. So what you may decide to do, if we just right click Q13 and say uh, block Q list. All right. So what it's actually done is it's put a it's put a block. If I just move that away, you can see this dotted line. It's put a block above 13. All right. So what that means is that uh, it's put a hard level in 13. Everything that was a level. And back here in Q11, if I take uh, 25 and put it at full and update my queue and allow it to track forward, what's going to happen is it's going to hit this wall at 13 and then fade out in, uh, when you actually trigger 13. So very important, as you're plotting your show, if you've got things like ends of scenes, ends of acts and starts of acts and things like that, it will pay to identify that queue and put in a, uh, a block to stop things flowing through into it. <clears throat> in fact, in this particular instance, I'm going to put start act one. I should start labeling things because then you actually know what I'm talking about. Okay, so here we go, start act one, and uh, we've got obviously a whole bunch of uh, pre-show queues that are happening um, prior to the start of our, our actual show, and Q13 is starting our show.